Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. And as you can see, we have her back. We have Elise back to talk about being superwoman, full-time employee, mother of two, uh, wife, uh, out of state, 21 properties, Burr, she's just doing this and that. And all, all I can say is, Elise, is how do you stretch the day? How do you get 28 hours of activity in a 24-hour day? Because you're doing amazing things, and I want to I repeat it. Um. Honestly, it's teams. It is having your teams in place and then having a very supportive partner that's on the same page. I'll tell you right now, Todd and I um, sort of have our own lanes in this real estate business of ours, right? Um, I'll manage the rehab projects um, and a lot of the property management, um, managing the manager, right? Um, and he does a lot of the financial sort of background stuff, the bookkeeping, um, any of our loan, um, and LLC, all of that is Todd. So it's, it's sort of having our lanes and then, um, God bless property management. Like you shared, we have 21 properties and there's no way we could do it having full-time jobs and kids and, um, you know, trying to fit it all in without our property manager for sure. Yeah. I think, I think there's a lot of things in there. Cause I get a lot of questions like, from from moms a, a lot of moms uh, like 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 how and i yeah. think there's a couple of things i don't like olivia has never been on my channel she's like i'm not going on youtube yeah. so we don't talk about it a lot but uh, again she and i have had clear lanes of operation since day one right she ran the day to day and i found deals and secured capital we we couldn't have been we would be if i had to do it all myself we would have probably stopped at 3 or 4 it just yep. it's it's not scalable like life gets in the way yeah, it's so helpful, honestly, um, when you have a partner that is complimentary in the business to you, like, I, I even I speak to people, you know, um, often at our own meetups, and, and it, people have difficulty even bringing their partner on board, let alone having a complimentary skill set to sort of scale the business. And um, it's we're very blessed. So I'm glad that you have that in Olivia, too. I'm I'm very blessed. Todd does all the boring uh, stuff. And I love <laughs> yeah. finding acquisitions. I we found, um, you know, I find found every market that we've invested in and the houses and the wholesalers and the networking. And that's my piece. And then I I manage our rehabs. And it's I I find it very enjoyable. Um, not the bookkeeping for sure. No, oh, it's funny. It's, it's <laughs> you and I have the same role. Find deals, yeah. network. Olivia and Todd do the hard stuff. Yeah, oh, that's, yeah, for <laughs> hard, sure. boring stuff. <laughs> That's exactly right. I'm so glad. Have it. Keep me out of jail too. No tax audits. Do exactly. All that stuff. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's that's pretty amazing. Um, so I'm curious. You know, the other thing that's very important is you and Todd. At least it appears to me. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we're on the same page even before you had your first rental, right? You had conversations about what you were working for. Uh, is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I mean, so um, a long time ago, I was a guest on your show, and I spoke about how I was an ER nurse, I used to be an emergency room nurse. And um, there's almost this sort of like reality that hits you in the face, right? Um, where you realize how short life can be. And so that sort of manifested over the years of um, retiring early and sort of taking advantage. It, it's this balance of like, do I, you know, YOLO and you live my life to the fullest right now? or um, act in a way that I can magnify my results and, you know, retire early. And I chose the second one. Okay. Cause I, <laughs> but um, I definitely wanted to retire early. And I just thought if we can just, um, you know, compound our efforts right now, we're going to really be fruitful later in life. And then um, we, we had some stocks we were dabbling in stocks and we chose real estate as the path, right? Because yeah. it, it, there's nothing wrong with stocks. We love stocks. Um, that, but um it takes a longer time. You have to have a much larger amount of money, right? I think it's what 25 times the amount that you have to yeah. have for retirement as versus yeah. you can just sort of look at a passive income number and generate, you get to it much sooner. So, so oh, we sort of, sooner. um, yeah, much sooner. So we decided on the real estate path. Absolutely. Um, and we're very blessed that we sort of have the same, we play monopoly the same way. Um, if you, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So, um, so, so path. you're 30, 35 now, I think yep. you said in video number one, uh, yeah. is it fair to say that both you and Todd will put the W2 behind you before you're 40? Yeah. Originally our goal was 45 and now, um, it's looking like 40. It is, it is looking like in the next five years and then we'll be work optional. We'll have to see. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to see if we want to still do, but but at that point it's our decision. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's pretty amazing. 
Uh, and again, you have in so out of state, right? Live in Southern California. What was the first state you went to? I forget. What was the first one? Indiana. Okay. We, yeah, and you only have we, one there. We only have one there. Um, I sort of got a little soured by the one, two, three cap rule. Um, mm -hmm. Indiana is great. Don't get me wrong. And this was part of being a novice investor. Um, you're um, listeners, you know, may want to hear about this, but mm -hmm. um, the one, two, three cap rule is the different property tax percentages that you have to pay. So if you're an owner occupier, it's 1%. And I, I thought it was 1%. It was actually up to 2% if you didn't live in the property and that hurt me and it hurt my heart. And, um, and at the same time, um, prices were going up dramatically. Um, it was, it was great. We bought well, but then the prices started going up. So the, both of those combined, um, we did end up switching market areas. Um, and it's much lower property taxes in Tennessee than it is in Indiana. There you go. And then when you look out in the future, you're you are focused on Tennessee now. Yeah, it's tough to leave. The market has really, yeah. um, I mean, it's all markets have done well, right? But Tennessee is one in particular that has done well, but we have our teams in place and it's um, it's tough once, you, you know, we've had some bad contractors in the past. And um, it, once you have a great property manager, a great contractor, especially because, you know, we, we do value adds, um, yep. it is tough to sort of start all over again somewhere yeah. else. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed, but um, we oh, definitely it would have, have to an be advantage. a very big, yeah, yeah we, we have an advantage of, of sticking the course here. So, yeah, it's funny. We talked to in video number one about, hey, midterm or short term rentals and why Olivia and I decided not to go there. It's kind of the same thing with the market. I mean, I get a yeah. lot of people like, what the hell are you doing investing in California? Well, I'm like, yeah. first off, Fresno is not California, right? California blue, Fresno red. I mean, yeah. simply yeah. said, yeah, um, it's 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 very different, but also that's why, I mean, I, in 2010, 11, 12, we were 10 30 wanting out of houses and we could have gone somewhere else. I, we flew to Texas. We flew to Colorado. We flew, mm -hmm. I think we drove to Reno or something. We, we checked other markets out. I yeah. didn't want to rebuild a team because we fired yeah. the first five. I'm like, right. I, I can't imagine doing that again. I right. got a team. I'm going to double down with this team and it worked out well. Right. But that's why we, I mean, if anybody wants to know why I'm not in a second market, it's because I'm freaking lazy and I'm not built a team again. And you can talk to everyone. Everyone's had an issue with a contractor. I mean, it's, a now, I guess that, yeah. and I guess with the experience comes being able to minimize losses earlier and you, right, you have systems in place. So like we have liquidated damages in our contract, right? That's very standard. Now you have to sign that. And we make sure that the progress is up to snuff with the progress payment. Again, maximizing, you know, gains and minimizing losses is the name of the game, but I don't want to start over again. I don't want to have to do it. Yeah. It's like having it a again. date after you've been married for so long. It's like, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Go to the yeah. dating no. pool again. No, no thank oh. you. Yucky, yeah. yucky. <laughs> That's a great analogy. Uh, so what else, what else would you say if there, you know, there's a, maybe it's a stay at home mom. I know you have a, a, a demanding day job, but if you're a stay at home mom, you're, you, that's what you want to do. It's your choice. But you, I actually have some stay at home moms that watch like, what should I be doing? Um, to help, uh, yeah. what would you, what would you tell them? Uh, well, first of all, if I was Michael Zuber, I would tell them to figure out their buy box, but, uh, <laughs> um, but for sure, um, you, you do need to figure out what you're looking for, right? Like what entry point are you looking for? What returns are you looking for? Um, you know, and then you can also, you have to figure out market area that meets those demands. Um, and that's sort of what we did from the very beginning is, um, we wanted lower entry points. We wanted um, certain things that were, of course, landlord friendly. Um, and so we figured out the criteria that we wanted. And then we just started narrowing in, narrowing in um, until we we hit our criteria. Um, and then start yeah. running deals, be on drips, um, set yourself on drips for whatever that, uh, you know, um, price point is and look for your three twos or whatever makes sense in that area. I'll tell you right now, talk to property managers in advance because some of them might tell you like, look, three ones do not rent in our area. It has to be a three, two, or, Hey, that's not that big of a deal. Or, you know, um, figure out what works in your area. Talk to property managers. They're the ones that know, um, to help you sort of define that buy box even more. Yeah. Very, very cool. Uh, and then how about getting on the same page? Cause that's something I think you and I have, our significant others, our partners yeah. in this, uh, we've, I, we've been on the same page since day one. Uh, but if you're not right. Yeah. How do you have those conversations? 
Yeah. So I've talked to people about this and I think they need to drag their partners to meetups because here's the thing is it's like who you're surrounding yourself with. If you're not familiar, if, if you're not, not only familiar, but like you don't know anything about this. When a person is confused, their automatic response is no. Their automatic mm -hmm. response is no. So they need, first of all, more knowledge. Is it a knowledge deficit? Is it that they just don't think this is you know, done by people? And they need to surround themselves in rooms where this is not only being done, but it's being done very well and making people a lot of money. Um, and it's, it's make it less complicated for them, right? It is simple at the end of the day. It's not easy, but it's simple. And there's a difference. So it, it needs to be broken down with how simple it is. And here's the numbers. And this is why it works. And this is, you know, why millions and millions of mom and pop landlords are making money on this. And they're going to give, you know, wealth to their children. So um, I would say drag them to meetups, um, let them sort of let it sink in um, and, yeah. and get on that same page. Let, let me, I, there's two, I have two thoughts here. Cause I, I get asked this question a lot and I, yeah. I had, freely admit I was lucky, right? We were on, we were 100% aligned day one. I'm blessed. One thing I've, I've found being interesting is to sit down and have a conversation about 10 years from now. What do you want our life to be like, honey, right. in 10 years? And often that's like, Hey, we're, we're living this, we're doing that. It's, it's a big life for most people, 10 years out. And then you pull it back. Well, this is how we could get there with more certainty. Cause you're right. The stock market's wonderful, but a bear market, you know, the 4%, like if you have a million bucks and you're living on the 4% rule, that's 40 grand rule. folks. Yeah. yeah. That, I'm not interested in living on 30,000 bucks a month. I don't know about right. you. Right. That's, that's not sexy, but right. you get a million bucks in real estate working, which you could control 10 million. Right. Now we can have a conversation, right? So that's one thing I've done. What do you think about that one? I a hundred percent, because once you start breaking down the goals, it becomes more real. Like, how do we get there? Um, and when you like what you said about leverage, it becomes this reality and this snowball. You don't want to stop. It's almost like have them buy that first house with you. Let them see the reality of it. We, Michael, during these years, I mean, because you're thinking 5X, right? Leverage is 5X. You're making, a, you know, a multiple of. Yeah, you had 5X with appreciation. Yes. You really, it's, it's yes. 10X. I mean, and you know, all the other benefits, forget the fact that it's 20, you know, you're only putting 20% down, it's 5X, all the other benefits, right, of depreciation. And we made millions of dollars. We're multimillionaires at 35. I didn't make that through nursing. I did not make that through nursing. We are literally multimillionaires. Um, and I will teach this to my children. I, this is, it's like the secret that I'm like, it's not a secret though. Like, you know, it's not a uh, secret. What, you were... 31 when you bought your first one or 30? I forget. Yeah, it was right about 30, 31. Yep. So I'm going to guess you didn't start as multimillionaires. Sure didn't. Sure <laughs> didn't. No, but we did. We, we act positive leveraging. So, so it's this whole mentality of, uh, uh, you know, our parents are not happy with us that originally we put a line of credit on our house. We did. We put a line of credit on our, well, um, a few properties. In. It was a few properties. And we put a line of credit in our house. And if, if, you know, our interest rate is 3% or whatever it was, and if we're going to go over here and make 15% on our money or infinite returns and then bring it back, which was yeah. so helpful with the birth strategy, we made sure the numbers work and we always brought it back. So we recycled the same capital over and over again, and we tapped into equity that was just sitting. I know, I know people don't, um, you know, want to touch their houses, but we brought the money back every single time we recycled yep. the same capital over and over and literally capitalized and made millions of dollars. It is what yeah, it is. I, the, so it's funny. It's, uh, Olivia and I had a rule, right? If we ever took an equity line, cause we had an equity line on our house. So when it started, we started, uh, do we, I don't think we do anymore. No, I don't think we do anymore, but, when we had it, her rule with me is we could use it, but there were two things. Yeah. One, we had to pay it off in a year, recycle Perfect. it back, right? Yep. Pay it off in a year. And two, I couldn't buy anything else until that was paid off. Okay. There's a priority there. It, yep. Yeah. And it's it's protection, right? And it's safety and it's all of the things. Um, and I, I totally understand. But again, positive leveraging. Would you, if you were going to make 10% over here, would you take out the loan that you're only paying 3% on? There's a 7% gap there. And it's like tough to, it is yeah. tough for us. And we play Monopoly the same way. I told we you. We do play Monopoly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but again, I want people to really hear this because I, I grew up in a household where we were a weekend away from being foreclosed, right? I remember packing yeah. up my bedroom 
because we weren't going to be there Monday. Wow. Now, magic wow. happened and it worked out, but I yeah. will never forget that. Yeah. So I will never put my family at risk like that. So yeah. I think those two rules for us made sense. Yeah. Right. Have to pay it off in a year. Yeah. And I can't buy anything else until that was paid off. Great. Burr worked. I Burr, I yeah. wrote about Burr before it was called Burr on Bigger Pockets as a yes. fe- featured blogger in 2010 11. I, I did love it. it. It's, all, it's all there still. At least yeah. I think it is. Um, but yeah, it's it th- that was enough for us. But I do have people that are like, oh, I can get 200K equity line and I can go out and buy five properties and max leverage. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? You're putting and the your numbers family have at risk. to work. You really have to be so conservative with it. We're so conservative with the numbers. That's the reality of it. It's the math. And I, we spoke about this in your last um, episode here. Um, we're in a different environment now, right? So the market um, will affect your strategy. And so now we're looking at creative financing. A lot of people, Todd right now was just in um, a mastermind group in Florida on a deep creative financing. And we've already done, cre- we've done several subject twos. Um, we've done it, but we know that the next environment is going to be ripe for, for creative financing. Folks, we just found video number three. Elise and I are going to talk about creative financing because I think she's right. You've heard me talk about it a bunch. It is coming. It is going to be an amazing 18 to 24 months. But before we do, Elise, where can people find you? Yes, sir. Um, Instagram is where you can find me, Investing for Financial Freedom. And you can find my husband, Todd Rasmussen, on Bigger Pockets. Let me favor, folks, let, let her know that on Instagram that you want her to come back to one rental at a time as a weekly featured guest. We want to see that. Do you want Elise back? Follow her on Instagram, send her a DM or a comment, and uh, let's see what happens. Thanks, Elise. Thanks.